I'm Nick Terzo, and you're listening to The Radical. On this week's show, I get to speak to one of the idols from my youth, an artist whose band remains one of the great rock and roll bands, having maintained their creativity for nearly five decades. This man reinvented the bass guitar, literally, and created a sound unto himself. A member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, class of 2016, with a critically acclaimed new record, In Another World, just released this spring. Cheap Trick legend Tom Peterson joins me to chop it up about his definitive bass sound, how a band stays aligned for decades, and how his passion in creating music makes it more like a hobby. Coming up, my conversation with Tom Peterson. It's Nick, and the Radical Podcast is now powered in part by Playboy Condoms. At Playboy, they are committed to products that make sexual intimacy safe, playful, and fun for all. That's why they have introduced Playboy Condoms designed for maximum pleasure and safety with unique quality and scent features that exceed international quality standards. Now available at Walmart or Walmart.com. Respect your partners. Welcome, Tom. I'm really thrilled to have you. This is a, a big deal for me. Oh, good. So um, the new record is out in another world. Um, and it is just classic cheap trick, man. You guys killed this record. Thank you. Yeah. How about that? Nothing to it, right? Well, I don't know about that. So you guys make well, it, you guys make it look easy, but... Um, well, we, we just... Well, it looks easy after the fact. <laughs> I mean, you finished it like prior to COVID though, right? So all the thematic stuff was already kind of done. Yeah, it was all done. We were planning on releasing that at the beginning of 2020 or sometime in that. You know, it was done in 2019. Yeah, and it's it's funny though cuz thematically it kind of fits what we all a lot of the songs fit what we went through last year. So That's correct. You guys are definitely sages. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe not, huh? Um, uh, probably not. Yeah. Um, when you guys write, like, how does that work amongst yourselves? Like, uh, do you just have songs that you say, these are my ideas? And are you guys write together? Or is it just all? We actually, we, we, when we get together to, to do a record, we'll then we'll sit down with see what each of us has. What, what have you got? You know, and sometimes we'll send them to each other and stuff, but you know, we travel a lot. So we're together a lot so we can listen to stuff on the bus or whatever. But one, once we really are basically just trying to come up with ideas all the time. And then when it comes down to it, Oh, we need to record now. You know, we never exactly know when that's going to be, if ever, but we continue on as, as if we're going to do another record, which we up to this point has happened. So it's 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 like a hobby that you like yeah you're, you're putting together song ideas because we have an outlet for it so then we sit together and go okay well we should us to go what have you got like oh yeah that really that's great or that's cool I, I, yeah i want to work on that or we should do that or that's that's got a great chorus but i don't know the verse is kind of weak what do you think you know whatever you know that kind of thing right and then we'll just kind of bash through what we all have and then see you know get our producer gets involved, you know, Julian Raymond, we've worked for the last several records and he really understands the band. So, you know, we're so close to it and he's a good, you know, he's more objective about what we're doing than we are. Right. And do you go into so that, this? I mean, can you guys curate enough that you kind of have the record, the exact songs, or do you guys kind of over record? No, we don't, we don't have the, no, it's, it's a, I think a kind of a big mistake to just have the exact songs because you don't really know how they're going to turn out and they're not like in a final form. So you could really hear like, okay, you know, they change while we're doing it and like, oh, this thing is too slow. You know, we got to, you know, or this is in the wrong key. Maybe we should do it, do this or this, ah, I don't know, this bridge kind of sucks. Let's do something else. You know, it's never really finished until it's, finished in the studio like that so they they almost all the songs really take on a life of their own and you never know it can be completely unrecognizable in the end when it comes out 
or not change at all. But the, you know, that's rarer that that something is just done. Right. And, and as a collective, I mean, do you guys, are there moments where you guys have to put up your dukes and defend something you think, wait a minute. <laughs> well, no, not really. If some, because if, honestly, if somebody really, did, we're willing to work on things we don't think are that strong, maybe, you know, or like, yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, if somebody could like, yeah, well, let's just, we'll try a lot of things because we've been wrong a lot and, you know, and we'll, to do do something we think is not that great or it's like i don't know and especially when people have us do songs for soundtracks or whatever it might be something like that like oh they want you to do this thing and that's like oh my god this thing is really not good and we've been able to make things that we really thought were horrible really sound good so <laughs> we're, we're, so how bad could it be? It could be really bad, you know, and it's like, we'll make the best of it. But that's not the case when we're doing our own songs. And if somebody really doesn't like it in the end, we just won't continue with it. Right. That's fascinating. And I mean, and you guys, as far as a collective, I mean, at this point in your lives, you all have your, your egos in check, right? It comes a little bit with age. I mean, was there more of that earlier on or did it kind of always work this way? No, we always, you know, we basically had, like the same type of music, you know, t- same types of artists and stuff. So we were in that way, like-minded and all we we really do is just put together songs and make records that we, we think sound cool to ourselves. We don't have any other, you know, what are the kids listening to or what are, what's happening these days and all that, that never pans out really at least for i mean some people are good at that but with that's not really what our scene is at all we just really do it for our own enjoyment basically and then hope for the best and usually we're wrong but what the heck at least we like it no matter what happens to it that's fantastic in another world i mean it's getting critically acclaimed and i mean is this really like your highest charting record I have to take somebody's word for that. That's what I heard. But <laughs> I guess so. What does that mean? What does that translate into? Zero, right? Well, Nothing. Ultimately, that's true. Bragging rights, I guess. To who? I'm going to brag to you. <laughs> it's fantastic. We well, got some great songs. Summer Looks Good on You is fan. That's a classic. You guys like wrote a classic song again. And that wasn't really going to go on this record. It was. I don't even remember what the reason we did it. It was kind of a... I think we did it. Well, we did it before we were putting this record together and we had it. And it's like, well, why don't we just, uh, we might as well put this on there. It's a great song. I agree. So it was kind of silly just to have it out there. Like it was some random single and nobody's ever heard it. Well, Nobody you- will ever hear it anyway. We might as well put it on this record. Right. <laughs> I don't know. You might've found your, your summertime standard from here on out for the rest of us. I- hope so i doubt it but i hope so i really do and on another world another great song um what compelled you kind of to do the two versions the more polished and the more raw performance well the raw one was the original version and then um our record label mentioned they said you know how would that song be as a ballad we're like well i don't know we didn't think of it i don't well let's the hell we'll try anything let's try it and we really kind of couldn't decide which one we liked best, so they both went on there. What the hell, right? You know, your sound, like the ability you've had to kind of identify and contribute your own sound to rock and roll, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's a real testament, and it's a really challenging thing to do. But how do you explain, like, how you were able to kind of carve out your sound? I mean, is it just your playing style? How do you... Define you mean me personally or as a group? No, you personally. Oh, well, it's just, uh, you know, I started out as a guitar player, a rhythm player, and then I switched over to bass after like a few years, you know, so, and it's really when all the three-piece groups and all that stuff started to come in, you know, Hendrix Experience and Cream and all this, and, you know, people started to get really good on, you know, as, as lead guitarists. So I, I could see that writing on the wall, that the, you know, just being the, the rhythm player, 
eh, that didn't seem like a, you know, I, I, I gladly switched over to bass. I thought it was fun anyway. So it's the way I play. It's not really a standard kind of a style. I suppose that a bass player would have, it's more like a really big rhythm guitar player. And just because of it, it's, you know, it's just my own style of playing. I, you know, probably it doesn't fit with everything. It's not whatever <laughs> most people would be looking for, I suppose, but it worked for us. So what the hell? Yeah. And I mean, did you, I mean, did a 12 string bass really exist until you started? You kind of designed no. it, right? Yeah. It was my idea to do the, the triple strings like that, you know, three E's, three A's, three D's, three G's. They did have, uh, Hagstrom company had eight string bases and it, they were just horrible instruments. The idea was good, but they just weren't, weren't any good. And so our, uh, some friends of ours, we're starting a guitar company. They started Hammer Guitar, Hammer Guitars, in Chicago, and I brought up the idea I had to them. I said, "Would you build this for me?" And they did it, and that was. Now I'm stuck with it. <laughs> what did I, mean, I do? <laughs> is it difficult to play, or are you just saying like the way you have yes. it laid out? Then yes. Is, is it is a song in a certain note that you just stay on that section of it, or do you move between hey, it? Hey, 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 what song? is this? The What's the trick? No. <laughs> What's the trick? No. <laughs> there is no trick. It's, it's the same four notes, E, A, D, G. So there's nothing extra yes. you have to know. It's not like cello tuning or tuned up like a banjo or something like, whoa, what the hell now? What's going on here? We're playing a harp or something. It's It's not if you can play guitar, you can play bass for starters, you know, you might not be that good at it, but eh, who cares, you know, (laughs) but it's really, honestly, it's just, it just suited my style of playing. We're in a small group and we wanted to really sound big. It's just an idea I had and, and it, it worked for us, you know? Yeah. Well, it's worked. It's it's really live. That's all I use our 12 string basses. Now I have my, my own uh, signature Gretsch, 12 string which i've been using for several years it's just fantastic oh nice um yeah how i mean do you keep a large collection of guitars still or not well guitars and basses really it's it's large for yeah probably a, a regular person but this is what we do for a living and we use it, different instruments for recordings so that's really the way I look at it, I want to have this for recording, or I need a, I need a Hofner for this kind of a song. I need a Gibson EBO for this. Or how about a Thunderbird or a P bass? You kind of have to have different stuff, you know. And different instruments make you play differently, you know. So, and and then you'll hear a song and go, yeah, that really needs a a Hofner sound, you know, some soft, whatever it might be, you know. And you know, so you have different instruments for different things. So, yeah, I have several different instruments, but I wouldn't really refer to it as a proper collection. It's not like, oh, I have, you know, like Getty Lee. I've got every Fender Precision bass in every year and every color. (laughs) That that is definitely not the case. Got it. Makes sense. I suppose if money was no object, I could do that. But... And how, like, a, you've it's done some like a uh, hobby, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Rick does it a little bit, though, right? You're, you're, you're. He's got all sorts mate. of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a lot, a lot of stuff that he doesn't. It's probably so much he doesn't even know what he has anymore. I'm not exactly sure. I'm, he couldn't, you know. But, but uh, I know what I have, you know, and I and I use and I trade things and oh, try this and that, and then yeah, I'm not going to use that so much or this, you know, whatever. Or you know, I got to get rid of a couple things. I need some money for this or that. I want to. Uh, so it's just kind of a, I suppose it's like collecting antiques or something or people do it, you know, except I use this stuff for my your trade job. So it's, I can, I can rationalize buying almost anything. Yes, it's all a tax deduction, my friend. But I don't really have any of the real high end stuff. I never did. You know, I more, I'm just looking for stuff that I can record with. Right. Got it. Um, At live, I just use 12 strings. So I don't, there's no really changing that up. So. You know, and I, I, you know, I play guitar too. Of course, I have a lot of different guitars. But you know, you guys have a Strat and a Tele and a 
Les Paul and a junior and, you know, whatever, 335, you know, so and we've been doing this for 50 years. So if I only got one guitar a year, I'd already be up to 50, right? It sounds like a lot. That's amazing. When would like your 50th anniversary be? Are we like on it? I don't know. A couple of years? I, well, we, the four Depends of us how you started define in 74. It, right? Yeah. 74. We're, our first album came out in February, Valentine's Day of 77. So I guess you could go by that. Got it. So, so 50 years from 27. Is that right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Nice. And how like Jesus. when <laughs> take a breath. <laughs> it's not like with this, not like that's the day we started either. Geez. <laughs> yeah, because you guys played in other bands, we right? Prior? The ten, we already had the ten thousand hours before that started. That's amazing. Uh and how, you've played on a lot of outside uh collaborations, right? Where guys have had you come in and play. I mean, are there any of those that stand out in your mind? Is and how do those normally yeah, come usually, together? <laughs> Well, it's usually stuff that I I enjoy. I like the artist, and it's not because my st- style of playing. You'd have to kind of want the style that we do, or you know, that's what you would know about me. So most people <laughs> don't necessarily want that. But you know, I did. Uh, I've uh, recently I did a well, not now. It's a few years ago. I did a record with uh, Donovan. I love Donovan, and he. I apparently he said that his first album he ever did was recorded here in Nashville and he wanted to get back to his roots, not his country roots, but I'm just, he did, just because he had recorded here originally. And he, so we, we did, we did a whole record with him and that was, it was great. You know, it's, you know, that kind of thing. I did a, did some recording with Frank black here. We did a, did a recording with a insane clown posse, you know, <laughs> it's just all this different <laughs> random Stuff I've you know, recorded with, uh, you know, Concrete Blonde, and you know, people that I know that are friends, and I just did a thing for um, Pete from the Dandy Warhols. He's got a he's got this side project called uh, Pete's International Airport. It's really cool. So I just did a track for him. And, you know, we're doing stuff with just different things. Mark Lindsay from Paul River and the Raiders. I've been doing a few songs with him. It's great stuff. You know, just kind of random things, but it's it, it's really. I'm not a, like, wouldn't be considered to be a typical session guy where I'd come in and just, oh, we need something, you know, to sound like so and so. And well, they better get somebody that knows how to do that. You know, they kind of have, would be looking for whatever, you know, the cheap trick bring? sound is or whatever they think I do and have to like that. Then it's, then I'm home free. Like, okay, great, cool. Yeah, do whatever you think sounds good because that's really all we know. We're not session guys that can kind of, fit in with anything, you know, and, you know, be versatile and get any sound and read, read charts and do all that. That's not our strong suit. Right. Well, what we don't I need to do it. That's not what we've ever done. Really. We've never, we never really, except the very beginning, we would, you know, we would do cover songs, but we never were in top 40 bands or anything like that. So it wasn't like we knew every song that was ever written and could, get up there for five hours and play all the hits and that we didn't do. We we would play cover songs. We liked the move or T-Rex or Bowie or whatever, and then throw in our own material. So people kind of didn't know what was what, but, it, but we never really sat around and did, we were never a top in top 40 acts that you had to, you know, so we didn't need to be versatile. We basically were just covering songs we liked to begin with or just making shit up off the top of our heads. <laughs> so there, that's, that's, you know, if you can't play it, you just don't bring it up. Like, I don't know how to, okay, I got this idea, but I can't play it. So uh, forget it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I really admire about you guys, and I mean, especially you can hear it on this record too, is, you know, to play with such like attitude still, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, you guys are oh, really, well, I guess it comes through, you know, we don't think of it that way. You know, it's not, you know, I don't know how you would, you know, fake that, you know, I don't really know how it, you know, what does that mean? It's like something, it's almost something that's, you know, like something you can't buy. It's just, we just work well together. Yeah. That's the alchemy of, you know, of, of the band. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's not something I can explain or that you could say here, do this. Here's the secret. There really isn't any either. You're, you're, you know, it certainly helps. I mean, if you're playing something for 
say, say a different artist, which is usually what happened if you don't like. So, so you're playing something with something that's like, yeah, I agreed to do this, but oh boy, this, I, you know, I can't think of any. I honestly can't think of a decent part to play. You know, it's, it's hard to come up with something for material material that you don't like, which is not the case with Cheap Trick. We basically just do stuff that we do like. So then it's like, oh, I love this idea. Yeah, like, okay, I got, oh, how about this? You're inspired. If you're uninspired, and hey, come up with something cool for this. Come up with a great part. Like, yeah, but this stinks. You know, it's really, <laughs> that is really rough. <laughs> now, a lot of people that are in sessions, they have to be able to be fast and go for it and come up with stuff. And, that, you know, I think, you know, doing sessions and demos and stuff like that is people are, you know, looking for speed and they're looking for stuff that they've heard before. And can't you play more like, you know, Jocko or whatever? Well, you better get, well, he's dead, but get him then, you know. Yep. So they, you know. So we just end up doing things that artists that we like or the friends of ours and they are people go, yeah, I love your style. I love that one song. Can you do something like this on this? But honestly, if you don't think the material's any good, boy, that's, that's rough. I, you know, you just really here to improve upon this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. It's impossible. I don't say that, but that usually <laughs> doesn't come up. It's usually people we know or something you like or, if it's something that's like, yeah, this is really kind of uh, lame. Sorry, you know. Yeah. But you know, we, we don't get asked that much really to do that kind of thing. I don't, and I'm not exactly sure why. I think a lot of times people would assume you wouldn't do it, or that they don't, or they don't want you. So there's those two elements of it, you know. Cool. Yeah. A couple more questions here, and then I will uh, we'll wrap it up. But um... okay. Is there a takeaway? Maybe it'll wrap up on its own here. It'll just hang up on us. Like well, it's, it's been doing that. It's, 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 it's editing it for us, it seems. Whenever it ends, that's the end. <laughs> yeah, that's the end, folks. <laughs> um, was there any kind of a takeaway for you, like having been, you know, kind of a traveling road touring musician, um, having this time off, like in the last year, year and a half, um, as you reflect on it, was there, not, did it work not for you? Not really, you know. Well, it, it's well, <laughs> no, but yeah, you know, we're used to being to working. But on the other hand, we're we like to have time to be creative and come up with song ideas. Really, that's our whole world. So that what, this gave us that opportunity too. So that now we are building a kind of a backlog of a bunch of material to work on, which normally you don't have that much time. You're travel. You have time, but you're traveling and you're in a ho different hotel every day and you're you know, running around like an idiot, you know, and yeah, it's, you got a lot of free time, but you know, you're exhausted or you're sick or you're whatever. And it, you kind of need to be in a situation where you want to be creative. And then, you know, having all this time off is out of the blue. It's like, wow, okay. I got time to sit at home and come up with song ideas, which I, it's basically, my hobby. I love that. I, when I get off the road, I come home and start playing guitar. I don't sit around playing surrender or anything, but you know, I'm just, play, <laughs> just playing because I, I enjoy it. You know, it's my, it, it is like a hobby that's, it's, it's a hobby that's gone well. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, that's a great way to look at it though. Over five decades of, you know, keeping your creative juices flowing, right? That this is something that still you yeah. love and you have a connection to. Right. And if we hadn't been recording all the time, maybe we were just resting on whatever we had done in the seventies and just did those songs. And, did, but we'd always, we've always recorded, you know, for better or worse, you know, or, you know, and usually the stuff is not any big success. It's just is, you know, it's us. And you, uh, you know, we just, we do records to really for our own enjoyment, basically. <laughs> usually that is that ends up to be the case. But at least if it's not successful, which is normally the case for really almost any artist, you know, most of the stuff they do is not successful, but we like it. So it, you know, even if it's not a big success, at least we're still proud of it. You can play it for your friends or, hey, listen to this or years later, like, wow, that really held up. Or like, you just never know, you know, something shows up in a commercial or a soundtrack and like, wow, what was that? You know, like, 
yeah, I don't know. We <laughs> did that 25 <laughs> years ago, but we, we thought it was cool then. It still sounds good. So, I mean, does it help you live, like rotate your set list so that for you guys, it stays interesting each night? Or no, you kind of have to really. just play the hits. Is that kind of how it works? No, we don't just do that. We definitely do. We do play the hits. Yeah. Cause people get pissed if you don't, but right. we don't have that many hits where it's like nonstop hits, you know, for two hours. So we have, we have got plenty of room for deep track, which we don't mind doing. And really we're in that situation, we're doing it for people who come and see us a lot and really, really, loyal fans because they love that kind of they love you can see their faces when you do something that's a deep track off you know an early record or some just or any record really like whoa you know they haven't heard it before maybe we've never played it or it gets requested but we don't really play it we have no you know nobody's ever heard of it except the diehards but we'll do stuff with the diehard and you'll know that like, you'll see you, know, you recognize people and you just like we'll start some random song and like you can see their faces like, Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, it's, it's great. You know, so it, it's, it's kind of funny. So we're really doing it for, um, you know, long time and really, you know, fans and that know the deep cuts. So we just kind of go back and forth. It's really not exactly for us, but you know, not really. Well, that means we have to learn one of those. So, <laughs> so we'll go into sound check and go, yeah, how does uh Jesus daddy should have stayed in high school. Uh-huh. You hum a few bars of that, will you? How does that thing go again? And, like, you know, and then we'll run through them at a sound check. Like, okay, that's great. Okay, oh, that's it. All right, got it. You know, because we don't just remember all that stuff off the top of our heads. Certainly of course not. not. Of course well, not. Well, I don't know about certainly, but we, we don't. So. <laughs> and you have plans coming things. up. I mean, you know, and a lot of the things, we, a lot of the things too, you'd never have played live. So, but yeah, playing things that are random and really unexpected, it's really. It really is great seeing people's faces react to that kind of stuff, you know. Then, but in general, the crowds are like, "Oh, that was nice." When's the flame going to be played? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there you go. You know, the other kind of not so big fans because it gives them time to have a bathroom break. You know. Oh man, here's a song off our new record. Like, oh boy, bathroom break. <laughs> so, do you guys have touring plans coming up this summer? Right, you guys are going to go out. Uh, yeah, we're going, we're doing random shows. We're kind of just waiting to see what comes through. I don't know what's going to happen yet. So we're kind of the last to know. We're like, we're like doctors. We're on call. (laughs) Firefighters. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's more like it. Slide down the pole. We got to go. Yeah. Okay. We're just ready to go. We're just sitting around here watching TV. Okay, go. (laughs) So in a way, you kind of can't make plans to do anything else. You just have to be ready to go. You know, so it's good and bad at the same time. But yeah. if we knew ahead of time, here you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have two years off. Like really? All right. You know, yeah. maybe you'd think think, but you know, it's never like that. So, so so one last question. Now. One last question yeah. for you. I mean, you guys are a band of brothers, obviously, after this many decades. Um, but was there ever a mm-hmm. point over the last four or five decades where the train nearly came off the rails? Like, was there something where it just like, man, it just can't go on? Or did the music provide that for you and you just yeah. shouldered on? Not really. I think, you know, basically we're proud of what we cr- created and it was really our life, you know, the, the you know, a cheap trick. And it's like, it's something we we came up with and we have a, you know, a sound and we, we enjoy doing that. And it's, it, you know, it means a lot to us. So, you know, it's uh no, it's not something like, Oh, I got it. This is ridiculous. This, I can't stand this anymore. It never really came to that. No. Good personal chemistry you guys have had and pride in that is something that's, uh, you know, that's fantastic. And yeah, you we, are, pride. we are very proud of, yes, we are, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, what, what we're known for and that's what we like to do. And it's nice that you know, at least a certain, we have a big enough following that it enables us to continue working. We, we don't have a, you know, we never were that big where we could afford to not work. <laughs> that's a different level. That's, a, that's some other groups, you know, that's the stones or you two or whatever, you know, but you know, like really huge arena, you know, big acts. But 
on the other hand, you know, we've done well enough where we can continue. It's, you know, we can make a living doing it. And that's really more than almost anybody can say, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, it's the, the luck of the draw. Luck is such a big part of it. And, you know, we were lucky and we just, you know, it's timing and th- things you can't even, you know, did you have any control? So we just keep going. Awesome. Well, thank you for doing like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Midwest we work ethic. Keep, we have Midwest to keep moving work or we ethic. Die. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't even know what that. It's just a work. You know, we have to work. You know, there's. You know. It's, you know, that's that's what we do for a living. So that's you know that's that's not unusual. It's just, but it's the kind of thing where, you know, yeah, people do a lot of stuff for a living, but then they're glad when they get to stop. We don't really, you know, want to stop. We'll just keep going. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to see you live. I haven't seen you guys in probably a couple of decades, so I definitely need to oh, see Oh, we're better now. Lives. Way we've been practicing, so we're <laughs> way better. Good. I need to see you guys live for sure. So, uh, well, Tom, now we've taken a lot of time off, so it's easy to say, like, maybe we won't be any good anymore. Who knows? Well, I doubt I like, that. How does this, what do you, what is it, what are the, what are the, String, what are these strings called again? That's an E, <laughs> that's what's the one next to it. That's an A. Okay. <laughs> I highly doubt it. So um I look forward to seeing you on the road. Um, thank you for doing this. Um, and congrats on the new record. It's fantastic. Well, thank you. I, honestly, that's really nice to hear. You know, we uh we try our best and you know, we're not always we're not always right, but we're right sometimes. And I think it's uh, you know, we're we're proud of what we do and you know. We just keep going. Absolutely. We're always chasing that perfect record. So we haven't gotten there yet. Not even, it's like chasing the perfect tone. You can't, you know, like we love great tone. And it's always like so elusive. Like, oh, God, it sounds good right here. And like, it sounded so good yesterday. What happened? You know? Oh, no. <laughs> so you're always chasing that thing that you can't really master it. You can't really get there, but you have to try. Well, that is life, man. That is life. So yep. thank you so much for your time and stay healthy. And thank you for doing this. My pleasure. Really. Thanks. That's our show this week. We thank our sponsor, Playboy Condoms, for supporting these episodes. To follow what's happening with this podcast, you can go to the radicalpod.com. You'll find past episodes, show notes, and even merchandise such as T-shirts and hats. Also, I encourage you to follow and rate us on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, please follow us on social media, The Radical Pod, where we reveal more about upcoming guests. Thanks for listening and spreading the word.